Got a new PC? Well, you're gonna need to set it up, so let's talk you through those steps, starting with just getting it out of the box. So when you first get it out of the box, you might find that there's some packing material inside. You will need to remove that though, so you'll want to remove the side panel. Normally it's just two screws at the back, although this case is a little funny, and you actually need to use the two screws on the top panel to then pull this one off. Then you can lift the glass panel up and away, and then you can gently prise out the foam. When it comes to plugging it in, well, the first thing you need to do is give it power. And that gets plugged in, in this case, on this side, which is a bit odd. It's normally down at the bottom, but this case is a sort of slightly wider one. Uh, what you'll be looking for is the port that has three pins. It's sort of a, a flat-sided, almost shaped like a D, uh, and uh, is often called a kettle lead. I'll put the proper IC name on the screen, but it only goes in one way clips into place or slides into place and then you flick the little switch down so that the one is, is flush instead of the zero. Uh, and then when it comes to your graphics card and connecting to your monitor, please, please make sure that if you have a graphics card installed, you plug the display cables into these ports, not these ones. If you don't have a graphics card, as in if you don't have any ports down here, then sure you can plug them in up here instead, but if you have any here, plug them in here. In my case, I'm using display ports, which just clips into place and clips into one of the ports just like that. And lastly, you want to plug in things like your keyboard and mouse, any speakers you have, and if you're using wired internet or ethernet, then you want to plug that in too. You might also be able to screw in your Wi-Fi antennas. They're often up in this section, although in this specific PC, it's actually a separate add-in card right down at the bottom that you can screw into down there. And of course, once you have it all plugged in, well, then you can hit the power button. Hope all of the, uh, the fans start spinning and light up if they're RGB ones, the RGB lights turn on your, uh, well, everything just starts running. You should see a, a display pop up. And it's a good idea to spam your delete key to get into your BIOS, your sort of, well, basic input output system, the sort of menu that runs at a base level that lets you control a, a load of different things. The few key settings that we need to, to verify though are that XMP is enabled in this uh, BIOS's case, it's actually a nice easy toggle up in the top corner and this one is selected for XMP Profile 1 which is all good. Uh, we also want to check our boot priority. This is what order the, the system will go through when booting from the, the different drives that you may have. In our case, we want to make sure that our, our hard drive, our Windows Boot Manager disk, is the first one in the list, which it is, so we're all good. And it is worth noting your BIOS version as well, which in this case we can see here, just so that we can then uh, check against this uh, to see what's the, the newest version and if it's worth updating to or not. Once you've made a note of your BIOS version and checked that all of your settings are all good, you can hit F10 to save and enter, and then the system will reboot and hopefully should boot into your operating system, normally Windows, where we can then uh, check the BIOS version, check our drivers, and then get gaming. If it's your first time booting up the system since Windows has been installed, you might need to go through the menu. Generally speaking, you just click yes or next. Uh, if you want to add a second keyboard layout, you can, or you can just click skip. Uh, it might take a while to check for some updates. And generally speaking, especially if you only have the Windows 10 Home instead of Windows, uh, Windows 11 Home instead of Windows 11 Pro, you have to sign in with a Microsoft account to get started to use the PC. Whereas on the Pro version of the, the, the license, uh, you should be able to still use an offline account if you prefer. Personally, I do prefer using an offline account uh, as I generally don't prefer, uh, well, anyone tracking my, my data and information as, as much as I physically can, but, well, if it's your only option, then unfortunately that's what we have to do, at least for now. I would generally recommend you click no to all of the analytics and tracking, ad stuff, it's 
terrible. Uh, and generally speaking, I would recommend not subscribing to OneDrive or whatever, especially during the setup, or paying them $79.99 a year for an Office 365 subscription. Uh, again, I would generally say no to all of those, although happily all of those options are, you know, more hidden or obfuscated options rather than nice clear buttons. Thanks Microsoft! Anyway, when you load in, you'll be loaded into the Windows desktop and greeted with the new terrible start menu and some pre-installed apps like, oh, TikTok. Nice, thanks Microsoft. Uh, yeah, I would highly recommend heading to the web browser, which by default, the pre-installed one is Edge, waiting for it to configure itself for some reason. Uh, and then uh, ideally immediately use Edge to download a browser like Firefox instead. If you don't fancy doing that quite just yet, then the next thing I would do is uh, press Control, Shift, and Escape to open the Task Manager up, press the little More Details button, click Performance, and then click on the, the bottom option on the left, your GPU Zero, to check what graphics card you have. Uh, search for something like NVIDIA drivers if you've got an NVIDIA card, or if you have an AMD one, then search AMD drivers instead. Uh, in our case, we want to click on the RTX 30 series. Uh, technically speaking, from here, you don't really need to select anything, but I'll select it anyway, and I'll pick Windows 11, as that's the operating system we have, and you can click Start Search. You can also just hit the Automatic Driver Updates button to download GeForce Experience, at least if you're on uh, an NVIDIA card, and then we can check what driver version we have here, and if you right-click on your desktop, uh, and I think it's now under the, the new option, what is it, show more options, then the NVIDIA control panel, uh, and you might need to agree to the uh, the license agreement, as uh, as you always do. Uh, then you can see the driver version, which uh, the one installed is uh, 4.96.13, and the latest one is 4.97.29, so it might be worth us upgrading that driver. You just click get download, download the file, and run the installer. And then that's pretty much it. The system is up and ready to go. And you can use a website like Ninite, that's N-I-N-I-T-E, if I remember rightly, uh, to download uh, a single installer file that will let you install a whole load of programs all in one go, like different web browsers, and probably more importantly, th uh, programs like Steam for your general games library and, well, getting gaming. So that's how to get a new gaming PC all set up and running. If you have any questions or any suggestions, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. We also do a weekly live, uh, live uh, tech support uh, live stream uh, every Thursday night at 8 p.m. UK time if you want to pop in and ask any questions live and get a, an answer relatively quickly. Uh, if you want to be notified of that or the plenty of new videos that come out every week, then feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. There's plenty of more videos on the end cards, including a load of reviews and other how-to guides, a load of tech explain videos as well, so feel free to take a look at those. If you want to support the channel, you can do so in a load of different ways, including through YouTube itself, through the YouTube join button, where you get access to our Money Men Discord chat, sponsor-free videos, and some cool emojis to use on those live streams and in the comments down below. Or you can also support on Patreon instead, if you prefer. You can also pick up hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or use a load of different affiliate links or places like Amazon and Overclock GK if you want to support the channel but not necessarily directly monetarily. I'll also leave a link to this system. It's from CyberPower PC. They're not a sponsor, but they did provide the system for a number of other videos that you can also check out on the channel, but I'll leave a link to it in the description down below if you're interested. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.